Vatican City, scene of yet another meeting of the College of Cardinals as they gather in conclave to select a successor to Pope John Paul I. The press of the world and a vast growing crowd wait until evening for the signal that announces the result of the voting. A Pope has been elected. The Vatican balcony becomes the center of attention. But for the expectant world, a shock. The new Pope is non-Italian, the first for 456 years. He's Cardinal Cariol Vortiglia, the first Pope from a communist country. He names himself Pope John Paul II and blesses the crowd. After the initial surprise at the Sacred College's choice, the Catholic and non-Catholic world is overjoyed. The election of Cardinal Vortiglia stirs Polish patriotism and many Polish expatriates, some in national costume, crowd into St. Peter's Square with Catholics from other countries for the Pope's inaugural mass. The appearance of Pope John Paul II is greeted with quiet emotion. Many see the elevation of an Iron Curtain candidate to the papacy as a sign of hope for millions of Christians under communist persecution. Cardinal Vortiglia is known to be a man of warmth and intellect, having at his command several languages. Ornate ritual and regalia at the Pope's wish are discarded. He receives simply the woolen papal stole. Attending the Mass are dignitaries from many countries, King Carlos and Queen Sophia of Spain among them. Pope John Paul receives the Cardinals in turn, a word and an embrace for each of them. To many Catholics, the departure from centuries-old staid protocol signals a resurgence of religious fervor, especially among the young. Indeed, in his address to the assembly from the Vatican steps, His Holiness directs his words to youth, calling them the hope of the world. Britain opens its arms to the boat people of Vietnam. Arriving at Stansted from